This presentation is on how to write your final year project report, otherwise known as PSM, for the pure me mechanical engineering students in School of Mechanical Engineering. If you have not met me, that's me at the Hokkaido Ice Festival, me in the receding glacier at the Furka Pass, Switzerland. Why do you need to write a report on your final year project? Well, you need to have a spirit or the soul, jiwa, to start writing your final year project report, the formal one, thesis. Now, a good piece of technical writing is as important as doing the project itself. Do not take it lightly. Communicating what you have done is an important part of science. Good technical writing and oral speaking skills are much desired by potential employers. And of course, your report is worth 20% of the overall marks. It is a training and writing for that desired career. What do you write about? To identify the audience, in this case, it's easy. It's just academics who are familiar with your project, according to the panels. Now you have all the documentations of your final year project. You are not including all of them in your report but enough to be repeated by a reader. That means someone else who comes in to read your thesis will be able to repeat everything that you have done. It should include, the thesis should include introduction, theory, methodology, results and discussion, and conclusion. Basically, five standard chapters. Maybe more if your supervisor advise it, but never less. Essential complicated mathematical derivation may be included in the appendix, but they must be referred to in the thesis itself. Otherwise, they are not needed. The thesis write-up must be concise and informative, but within the page limits. I believe it's about 100 pages, excluding the appendix for the final year project thesis. This is just a sample. Note that for some supervisors, the theory is embedded in the methodology and some supervisors uh, prefer to separate the literature review and the background into separate chapters. So, of course, your supervisor has the final say. This is just the guideline. When do you start writing? Well, you should have done so more than 14 weeks ago. You should have been writing since you started your final year project. But I'm sure you have your FYP1 a draft, your notes, your write-up, so that should be enough to start writing your thesis. So how do you begin? Well, you should have separated them into the introduction, literature review, theory and methodology, results and discussion, conclusions, recommendations. Well, the rest is just the title. The abstract is the last piece of information you write. Again, discuss what is appropriate with your supervisor. Now you have all your materials documentations from FYP1 and FYP2. You may need to modify, edit, extend what you have written in your FYP1 draft, which includes the background and literature review. Then you have your theoretical formulations, uh, which again, I believe some supervisors merge it into the methodology, but this is very important. Why? Because they are the basis, the foundation of the final year project. Then you have your results and discussion. That means your data collected, the outcome of your project uh, represented in terms of graphs, charts, and tables. But remember that whatever figures, tables, charts that you include must be discussed. If they are there by themselves without any uh, reference in the text, then they are redundant. Then you have the conclusions. Minimum is five chapters. Again, maybe more, but never less. Refer to your supervisor. What goes where? Introduction. The background of your study. Preliminary, leading to a focused past study, leading to the problem statement of your research. You have your objectives and your scopes. And then your introduction contains previous related studies that imply the need for your study. The literature review from journals, reliable magazines, recent textbooks, etc. Note your final year project does not have to be new. You are not doing a PhD here. This is just a sample. Note the way the reference is cited here. Okay, we have the author year 
and if the author is mentioned, it's just the year in bracket. Again, here it's a sample. What goes where? The theory. So you have to describe the physical system of your study if it is a physical system, a real system. Is it the whole system or just a process or a component? A schematic of your analysis of your study must be described, defining your boundaries, basic concepts and theory related to your study, describe assumptions and justifications needed to solve your final year project, and the governing equations needed, conservative equations, laws, etc. needed to achieve your objectives. It's a sample again. If you are doing simulation, note here the schematic of the computational domain that the, a student has done. So here there is no physical boundary, but an imaginary boundary that contain the computational domain. What goes where the methodology? In the methodology, you must describe the procedure. A flow chart may be included to support your descriptions of the work, but it cannot stand on its own. You still have to describe to a certain extent the flow chart. Well, but the flow chart may save you pages and pages of description. If a computer code is used, list the algebraic equations. Some of them may be included in the appendices. Now, if a particular method model is used, you must justify it. Yeah? Explain the standards follow, whether it's American Society of Mechanical Engineers, ESME or ASHRAE, etc. It's important to have reliability of your method and state the accuracy of your measuring devices. Your temperature measuring devices, your pressure measuring devices, etc. For the, those doing the experimental final year project, include a table of operating parameters that you have utilized and the cases that you have completed your study. Results and discussions. Select the important relevant data to be presented. Decide in what form your data could be best presented. Explore. So the graph may be not as good as a chart sometimes. Present your results in a logical sequence. How the data was processed must be described and you highlight what is important. And you discuss what you may infer from your data, critical analysis and cross-referencing with previous studies. That means if you have obtained a particular pattern or trend that has been reported in a previous study, you may cite that previous study studies that provide strength to your discussion. Well, results and discussions is the core of your project, what you set out to obtain. So evaluate your results. Is it as expected? Unexpected? If unexpected, why? Illustrated. Has it been proven? Explored. Limitations. Your results may be just a repeat of past studies. Again, you're not doing PhD here, but could have been presented differently. Use your own words to describe your results. Captions for results must be appropriate, short, and concise. The conclusion, you sum up the outcomes of your FIP. State explicitly what you have obtained should match your earlier objectives. Highlight what you have discovered from your results and discussion. Possible extension of the study may be recommended, relevant ones, and recommendation must relate to your final year project. A recommendation should not, should not be falling from the sky out of the blue. Check. Captions are where they are supposed to be. References are all in, cited ones only. If they are not cited in the text, remove them from the list. Appendices are referred to in the text again to support what you have uh, done because there's a page limit, 100, so the rest you can put in the appendices. Symbols and fonts are compatible with your print printer. This is very important. I've seen theses with symbols looks like alien writings. Pages are all in and in order and UKM, UTM FKM format is followed. Captions. Captions for tables are generally above the tables. Captions for figures are below the figures. Table figure labels follow the chapter where the table figure appear. E.g. if your figure appears in chapter 2, then the first figure should be labeled figure 2.1, the next one 2.2, etc. References include evidence of statements, equations, system that you 
have used yeah, from textbooks, journal papers, magazines, etc. Yeah. Be consistent in your format and citing a website requires an access date. So what's in the appendix? Details of derivations, experimental procedure, sample calculations that couldn't be included in your 100 page thesis. Lengthy tables, data, yeah. your report should be able to stand on its own without the appendix actually. Yes. What have I missed? The abstract probably. So how do you write your abstract? Your abstract in one page should contain the problem, your solution to that problem, the methodology, the results and conclusion, and all that in one page. Again, refer with, with your to your supervisor about the abstract. 